Low-key actress and Hollywood veteran Winona Ryder had made real estate news in 2020 when she put her San Francisco home on the market for $5 million. While she owned the Dutch colonial beauty for 25 years, it reportedly wasn't her main residence and she'd rented it out a bit as well. It's said that Winona still owns her longtime residences in Beverly Hills and New York City, which were once upon a time featured in Architectural Digest. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Winona Ryder is an actress who's received many awards over her long running career including a Golden Globe and has been nominated for two Academy Awards as well. She is well known for taking on quirky roles in her early films while moving to more prominent roles in the 90s. Over the late 80s and 90s, Winona would star in a handful of hit movies from Edward Scissorhands to Girl Interrupted to Dracula and many more. In the early 2000s, the actress took a break from films, returning in 2009 for the Star Trek movie and more recently, her popular role on the series Stranger Things. It said that her net worth at the time is somewhere around $18 million, which has afforded Winona some beautiful and comfortable homes over the last couple of decades. This includes one or two beautiful villas in Los Angeles, a lavish apartment in New York City and her former San Francisco abode. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment and today we're looking at the homes of Winona Ryder. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. In 2020, Winona Ryder listed a home she'd owned in San Francisco for 25 years. Classic Dutch colonial abode was listed at $4.9 million while she had purchased it way back in 1995 for $1.3 million. Located in the Cow Hollow neighborhood, the Victorian home was built back in 1902 and modernized plenty since to feature all the present day creature comforts you could desire. Cow Hollow is one of the most affluent neighborhoods in San Francisco and Winona's three level home boasted three thousand. 1,140 square feet of space with three bedrooms, two full baths, and two half baths. While they updated the home throughout, it was still able to maintain the period detailing of the original residence from years ago. Situated on a high spot of the exclusive neighborhood, the property borders Marina District to the north and the posh Pacific Heights to the south. A gated courtyard leads you to the side of the home where a cherry red front door is located opening to a foyer. Here there are original hardwood floors, leaded glass windows, and a switchback staircase with decorative spindles. Near Nearby, you'll see a formal sitting room which faces the street via more leaded windows as well as a traditional fireplace, while the second and more casual living room boasts a nearly identical fireplace too. The sunlit main level also boasts a dining room which is attached to the living area and this space opens through glass sliders to a sprawling deck with amazing views over the bay. You can see all the way towards Angel Island State Park from here and it serves as a great option to dine al fresco if the weather permits. When it comes to food prep, the modestly sized but well arranged kitchen is stocked with designer stainless steel appliances, light grey quartz counters and glass fronted cabinets. There are reportedly three bedrooms on the upper floor of the home, but plans show that one includes a large vintage inspired private bath, while the other two can function as a grand suite. This grand suite is made up of a shared entranceway or mini hallway, which branches off to a walk-in closet and another vintage style bath. Bigger of the suite's two rooms boasts a fireplace that resembles a French chateau, while both rooms offer glass doors opening to views over the bay. These views even show famous landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz Island. The lower level is home to a laundry room, bonus space with powder room, the garage, and a media room that opens up to the backyard. Considering it's ground level, it's not an actual basement. While outdoor space is quite limited in San Francisco, Winona's former home boasts a large brick terrace, a small deck hidden in the trees, and a lush garden, all within a deep backyard. 
While Winona owned the home for so many years, it's not clear when she last occupied it. It popped up for rent a year prior at $15,000 per month and it seems as though it had been cleared of personal belongings and staged with generic furniture. While it flew under the radar and went down in a discreet deal, it was reported that Winona also dropped $2.2 million through a blind trust for a home in Hollywood back in 2016 and it appears that the actress still owns it. Winona's home here is perched near the top of the Outpost Estates neighborhood in the east area of Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles, which is a celeb-packed enclave. Not to mention it's only a five-minute drive to Hollywood and popular hiking spot Runyon Canyon. The two-story abode is built in a Mediterranean style and was constructed back in 1947, spanning 2,154 square feet of space. Within the 0.33 acre lot, there's a gated entryway out front with a brick courtyard and fountain, and on one side a two-car garage. Meanwhile, the backyard of Winona's home has an oval-shaped swimming pool and a unique feature of the spot is that it has no neighbors on either side for ultimate privacy. It's on a peninsula surrounded by roads on three sides and open land on the other. Inside the home, there's some elegant and vintage details including the intricate chandeliers in nearly every common room. The kitchen and family room are constructed in an open plan like a grand living area with a high wood ceiling overhead and there's also a fireplace here. The attached kitchen boasts stainless steel appliances and a bar which overlooks the sitting area while there's also French doors leading outside. There's also another living room with fireplace nearby and a cozy sized dining room. Elsewhere in the home, there are three bedrooms, one of which is on the ground floor, while the master retreat is upstairs and made complete with a personal sitting area as well as a fireplace. This bedroom also overlooks the pool area out in the yard, which has more hedges and gates surrounding it to keep away any unwanted attention. It's also believed that Winona still owns her other two homes, which were previously featured in Architectural Digest, one in New York City and another in Beverly Hills. In New York City, she has a sophisticated apartment with high ceilings in a reported landmark downtown building, while her spread in LA is a modest-sized 1920s Mediterranean bungalow in Beverly Hills, which she had restored to its original state. From her feature in Architectural Digest way back in the 90s, we can see that Winona's homes at the time were feminine and charming. She drew help from her friend Kevin Haley, an actor who's also dabbled in decorating as a hobby. Her 1920s home had been stripped of its original Mediterranean charm by upgrades and Winona, well she wasn't a fan of this. She even called these upgrades creepy. She saw what her friend Haley had done in his own apartment and loved the aesthetic and trusting him to help her out with her own places. He worked on restoring the actress's home as close as possible to the original, having the orange stained ceiling sandblasted from the timbered ceiling and saved wrought iron hardware and curtain rods. The tiny patio and sloped backyard here was also transformed into a romantic garden. The first piece purchased for the home that started the theme for the design was a 19th century chandelier with amethyst crystal drops located in the dining room. Then there were more jewel toned accents added in the living room and other spaces to blend, for instance, like the velvet chairs. The living room is also comfortable and informal, which is what Winona wanted for entertaining, while in the entry hall, there's limestone pavers as well as a sweeping staircase. Haley turned a small space upstairs into an open dressing room for Winona with whimsical lace patterned glass doors as well as a mirror dating back to the 1940s, while her master suite was decked out in a color palette of soft tone. Winona said about her home, I can't stand houses where you're afraid to touch anything. There's an authenticity about everything in this house. Anybody would be comfortable here. The back garden was also entirely landscaped with sandstone, river rock, and lush plants. In in contrast to Winona's Beverly Hills abode, the New York City apartment was created in a totally different mood. Haley said of decorating this spot, the word that came to mind was glamour. The soaring 18 foot high ceilings and tall windows to match gave the space an urban yet classy feel. The living room was decorated with lacquer panels from the 1930s Manhattan Dance Club as well as a Steinway piano. Winona also has a love for music which was accentuated in the Italian bar decorated with lutes and a violin 
as well as a 1940s French table with a base shaped like a musical note. In the dining room and bedrooms, there's a mix of contemporary furniture and pieces from the 1930s and 1940s. There are also luxurious textures, adding richness to the muted and pale colors. Now that we've gotten a look at a handful of Winona Ryder's beautiful and timeless properties from Los Angeles to San Francisco and even in New York, that brings this house tour to an end. So what did you guys think? Out of those properties, did you have a favorite? I loved Winona's design taste with all of the vintage glamour and charming romantic accents. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below as well as whose homes you'd like to see next on this channel. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't and I'll see you all next time. Bye!